Hi, I'm Jochen Raum, and I'm a core developer of Typo3, an open source content management system. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to implement a Sparkle plugin for Typo3. I'd like to query some data from the semantic web, and I implement the whole extension from scratch. On the right side of my content, I want to display some links fetched from Wikipedia related to Typo3. So I'm gonna, going to kickstart my extension now, and I open the Kickstarter in the back end, and I type in some basic information, semantic web integration, that's the title and name of the extension I want to develop, and the key is semantic, I add me as a software developer, and I want to have a plugin called TableView. So I close this for a moment, and my first model object is the Sparkle query itself. Okay, the next one I have a neat uh, Sparkle endpoint. Okay, and the next thing is I want to have namespaces, so the next model is namespace. Okay, and I want to give my Sparkle query a name. So I add a property, name, this is required, and the next thing is the, just a second, uh, the next thing is the query string itself. Now I have my endpoint and I make the connection to my endpoint, I want to edit it inline, Next thing, I want to have namespaces, and there can be many namespaces, so it's a one-to-end relationship. So, okay, the Sparkle endpoint has also a name, and this is required, and it has also a URI, where I can fetch my data from. So the namespace has prefix, And it has also a URI. Okay, well, that's it. Now I can save my extension. Everything's okay? Yes, I think so. So let's save the, the extension now. And I convert dynamic to static scaffolding, so all classes are written now. Let's see what's, what we have got. There is, let's refresh the tree, there is a new extension called semantic. And let's see what's inside, there is the classes folder with the controller, the Sparkle query controller, and the domain. There are the same terms I used in the domain model. Okay, there are also the templates already in place. Let's see what's inside the Sparkle query. There are the properties, the name, the query string, the endpoint, the namespaces. And there are also the getters and setters. endpoint and let's see how this is working. Let's install the extension now. I go to the extension manager and there is it. The semantic web. I create the database tables. Just make my update. Okay, now the extension is installed and I go to the list module, navigate to my page. And I include my configuration, my static template. <coughs> there it is. Okay. Now back to my content. I want to add content at the right side of the, the text. And I, I add the general plugin, 
Let's see. Let's select my plugin. This is the table view plugin. Save it. Now I have to define my starting point where my records are stored. It's basically on the same page. And I add, oops, I add a headline. Save it. And now I switch back to my page and reload the page. So, okay, it takes a while. Okay, here we are. This is a generic list view of the Sparkle queries. We don't have a Sparkle query yet, but now we just make a Sparkle query. I add a new Sparkle query. Where is it? Here is it. Okay, add a new Sparkle query. Give it a name. That's a type of three linked list. And I, well, before I add a query string, I define my, my endpoint and I take Wikipedia as an endpoint and the URI to fetch the data from is dbpedia.org. Slash Sparkle. Okay. And I add a namespace resource. It's basically oops, the same URI, but with resource. Okay, slash. Uh, create a new namespace, prefix prop, and the same thing. Property. Okay. Uh, now I can enter my query string select. All where. Yeah, that, that must be familiar. Okay. If you are used to use SQL, uh, res, typo3, the resource typo3, and a search for property. Um, reference. Oh, okay. Must be. And this is my variable. Like, okay. Now I'm finished. And I save my Sparkle query. Okay. There you can see all, all it's saved. And I go back to my page reload and there we have the list view. I have type of three links and the query string. And if I click on it, I have a single view. But this is not what, what I expect it to be. So I go back to my listing and I wanted to, to clean it up a little bit. So I go back to my code. No, where is it? Um, let's see, where's the template of the index? Okay. Let's clean it up a little bit. I don't need that. I don't need the text here in it. Let's drip it down the, to the basic table I need. Okay, the next lines, I don't need that. Well, okay, delete that. Okay, this is the Sparkle query. The name of the Sparkle query, save it. Okay, well, I reload the page and there is only the name of the Sparkle query left. The next thing is to implement the show action in the Sparkle Query controller. And there it is, and I use the show action to generate the output. I'll do that the query result. It's query result. Uh, and I um, invoke the execute method. But um, this method is not yet implemented in the Sparkle Query. So let's see what we've got at the bottom. I want to implement this at the bottom and I use the arc2 library written by Benjamin Novak. And the first thing I have to do is I make a new directory in the resources private folder. So make directory resources private libraries. Now I import it JIT clone from the from GitHub. Samsung Arc2. Okay. Resources private oops, libraries. Arc, I call it Arc. Okay. Now I have imported the library and now here it is. Okay. I use the Arc2 PHP class as the main entry point, so I require that in my class. I use an API function of, X, uh, of type of 3. Next path. 
I think yes, semantic. And now the relative path. Okay. Architects. Okay. All right. I load the class. So the next thing is I have to implement the execute method. Okay, function execute and um, now I want to have my statement and I build my statement string um, make it a, an empty string then add the namespaces for each this namespaces okay get the namespaces and I statement I add well I add now uh, um, some sparkle expressions prefix oh, namespace I get my prefix and now I have to add the URI namespace get URI okay Mm, that's all for the namespaces and of course I have to add my, my query string this query get query string okay now I hand it over to the remote store of arc oops arc2 get remote store this is the external library. So I had over some configuration. That's the remote store endpoint. I have defined my endpoints. So I have defined my endpoint with this get endpoint. And I need the URI. So I get URI. Okay. Yep, that's it. And I return the result of the remote store query. Okay, the statement, and I want to have rows. Okay, well, I think that's all. That's it, okay. Show action query result execute. It works. Um, now I want to alter my show action. This is the template of the show action, and I copy the code from the index action and I adapt the, the code a little bit. So I want to iterate over the query result I have a single result okay and I don't want to link to action but I want to link to an external source the URI is the single result link okay and I want to display the single result link as the text link. Okay, let's save this. External. Okay, all set. All set. Well, let's see. I click on Table Three Links, and now the query is executed. Wikipedia returns those links that are available in, s in the system, and now we have a Sparkle plugin. And we can basically query for any data that is available on the Link Data Cloud. That's easy. So, easier than ever before. If you want to try out Table 3, go to table3.org. And if you want to download the source of this extension, go to forge.table3.org. Thanks for watching!